Hey everyone, it's me Vetalino, and as you may have seen, Nintendo newly released their final trailer for Tears of the Kingdom, and it was packed with content for us to see and speculate about, because we saw stuff like Ganondorf is back, uh, Zelda is presumably lost, uh, whoever this character is, and of course we saw some glimpses of the Tears of the Kingdom themselves. So of course there's a lot of people who make speculation and theory videos about this stuff. Which is why I am here. Do you remember that what I'm going to talk about today is my own speculation and theory about what the Tears of the Kingdom themselves will be about? So whatever I'm talking about today might be absolutely inaccurate, false and hogwash by the end of the game releasing. So uh, be sure to note that this is not facts at all, but if you have your own theories or speculations, please do comment them down below. Uh, especially if you have something positive or negative to say about my own theory, please go ahead. I really want to have some discussion about all of this. Uh, and of course, before we step into theorizing, remember to subscribe, especially hit that bell if you want to get uh, updated on whenever I release a new video. So yeah, thank you for that and we'll be going straight into some theorizing. Disclaimer, the sources used for the theories I'm about to talk about are trailers, developer interviews, official art, and overall public marketing. This video was made before the hands-on demos were given out and tested by multiple game reviewers. If any videos or screenshots that were taken from those demos show anything to either confirm or deny my theories today, then let that stay unknown. I want this to be about the publicly known content, and I want comments and discussions to not contain any spoilers from that. Those will be automatically removed. Thanks in advance. So, back in September, we got the first trailer for Tears of the Kingdom, and we got shown this mural very early on. And this mural showed this figure surrounded by seven tear-shaped symbols. And of course this concludes that there are seven tears, right? Well, no, because at the end of the same trailer, we also got to see this mural, which includes two more. And these seem to be more important, and of course the figure returns, however with what seems to be like a maiden of sorts. So for now, we can theorize that there are a total of nine tears found within the game. And of course, so far from looking from the latest trailer, me and the community in general have found a total of six or seven out of the nine total tears. One of them is Riju's amber slash yellow colored tear hanging from her ear, Sidon's blue tear found on the back of his hand, Tulin's green tear hanging from what looks like his bow, Ganondorf's red tear on the middle of his forehead, and lastly, Zelda's yellow tear which she has as a necklace in this shot. These are the five that I feel are the most certain, though we have two more tears to discuss. Because this lady that we saw in the newest trailer also has one around her neck, kind of similarly to Zelda's. But is this Zelda or is this not? And is this tear her tear or is it not? We will discuss this a little bit further. And the other tear that I am a little uncertain about is the tear on the back of the hand of the figure talking to Zelda in this scene. And this figure might possibly be this lizard-like person from earlier in the trailer, and from what I can assume, is a Sonai, the ancient tribe that got hinted at in Breath of the Wild. Though this tear seems to be significantly larger in size than Zelda's. So for now we can assume the first five tears, the ones belonging to Riju, Sidon, Tulin, Ganondorf and Zelda, are part of these five tears in this mural, and the one held by this lady could be the same as Zelda's, however I believe it to be another one. And I do also believe that the tear on the back of the hand of this figure, the Sonai, is most likely one of these two. And if we assume this Sonai and the figure on the mural is the same, because they do look alike a lot, then it makes more sense that they have one of the two bigger tears. So for now, let us conclude that we have seen seven out of the nine tears. But where are the other two? And what do they all do? Or what do they all symbolize? Well, I will go over all of that later, but before we do that, I will go ahead and dig a little deeper into some of the characters that are revealed in the latest trailer and more details about them and the story, so that we can connect the dots and figure more out of what the tears might be. So this person that got revealed in the news trailer is most likely this one too. And I believe this person to be of the ancient tribe of the Sonai. But how is an ancient tribe that was presumably lost in the game? 
Well, that I will explain a little later on, because for now, we know that the Sonai seem to be some sort of guide to Zelda, based upon this clip. And also in the same clip, it also shows us, as mentioned, the big tear at the back of its hand. And as you may have seen too, their arm is very similar to Link's arm. This may connect them both to one of the earliest trailers and some from the new ones as well. Because since Ganondorf was confirmed to be in the game in the latest trailer, that confirms that this dehydrated character was in fact him. And as you see, he is held in place in presumably this locked dehydrated state because of this hand. And this hand is identical to the Sonai's and what Lynx is going to look like later on. And what I theorize is that the Sonai or another one is either doing a spell or like a spiritual lock on Ganondorf to keep him in place. However, when Ganondorf gets released, the arm gets drawn into Lynx. And we have seen him using this hand to do different abilities. So we can assume this hand and the Sonai's are special. And I will speculate more about that later. So let us talk more about the rehydrated corpse himself, Ganondorf. The one important detail to note about Ganondorf from the news trailer is this shot. This character is theorized by many to be THE Demon King Demise himself, the ultimate antagonist of Skyward Sword, and from what we know from Zelda's lore and story, the origin of Malice. Because at the end of Skyward Sword, we learn that Demise is pure Malice himself, and he swears on his defeat that his Malice and hatred will be reborn over and over and come back to fight the spirit of the hero and the blood of the goddess. So he will be reincarnated over and over. And this reincarnation we know as Ganon or Ganondorf. And in this shot, we see a figure with flaming red hair and what seems to be scales on his arms, just like Demise. We can also see this figure's face slightly, and they have dark skin and a horn at the front of their head. And as mentioned, many others have stated that they think this is Demise himself, taking over Gandor's body of some sort. Though I have another theory. I believe this is a hybrid form of Ganondorf and Demise. And Ganondorf is basically powering himself up, and presumably with this tear, like in this shot, and transforms into a fusion between himself and Demise. Because at the end of Skyward Sword, Demise gets sealed within the Master Sword, an eternal prison. And however, we have seen the shots and the logo of the game with the broken Master Sword. So there is reason to believe that both Demise and potentially even Fee might make a return. So Ganondorf is really fusing with his true released form, Demise. Since he too is known as the Demon King, it also makes sense why he says this line. And from this mural at the end of the latest trailer, we also see that the figure on the right looks very similar to Ganondorf's demise form, with the horn and all. This is further supporting the theory that the ultimate antagonist might be this hybrid of Ganondorf and demise. Though, I can understand people thinking it will be demise himself. However, I think it will be Ganondorf, but only in demise form. Think of it as Ganondorf being the host of Demise's body, rather than the opposite. This hybrid theory also takes us over to Zelda and this person. Because Zelda and this person are very similar. They both have very similar clothing, and this lady has more tears under her eyes, and well as the same earpieces as Zelda. And of course many others have theorized, just like with Demise, that this is the goddess Hylia herself. I think, however, that just like Ganondorf and Demise, that this is not Hylia, who has taken over Zelda, rather it is Zelda powered up and in a form similar to Hylia. Just like Demise, we know from Skyward Sword that Zelda is the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, and given Demise and Hylia being pure opposites, gives us more of an idea what this figure, just like Ganondorf, is Zelda, powering up and projecting a form more akin to Hylia. This makes more sense when it comes to the logo of the game, because the shape around the title is also better known as an Ouroboros, and it is most commonly shown as a lone snake eating itself, symbolizing infinity and rebirth. However, the logo for the game depicts two snakes eating at each other, and this might indicate the demon demise and the goddess Hylia dueling it out. So the game's ultimate goal might actually be to finally put an end to this endless cycle of rebirth. Both Hylia and demise would end their reincarnations, ending the feud for light and dark. We also need to talk about this important detail. 
must find me. Zelda says Link needs to find her. However, how is she lost? We do not know how Zelda got trapped or lost, but what we do know for sure is her and Ganondorf's location. Thanks to another YouTube channel, Luigi Bros, we have figured out that Zelda is in fact at the back of the Temple of Time on the Great Plateau, on a platform that doesn't exist in Breath of the Wild. And they also found Ganondorf's location from their shot, and he is in fact on top of the Shrine of Resurrection, also on the Great Plateau, on yet another non-existing platform. So what I theorize is that Zelda and Ganondorf is at some point in the story, way back in time to some ancient version of Hyrule. To support this theory, Luigi Bros also uncovered from the Ganondorf shot that Hebra Mountain does not have its signature hole. And if you do know what this hole is, then it is stated in the Creating a Champion artbook by a developer that the hole through Hebra Peak was made from the battle against Calamity Ganon 10,000 years ago. Meaning this scene with Ganondorf and potentially the same with Zelda and the Sonai is from the Great Plateau over 10,000 years ago. And the location of Ganondorf being on top of the Shrine of Resurrection can determine that this is the location where Ganondorf changes into his demise form or demon form if you'd like. And it is also for this reason I believe this is the same location where potentially Zelda will change into her Hylia form. So now, I think I may have caught you all up on the vital characters and story theories that I have. So let us get back to the tears themselves. First off, I mentioned we have 7 out of the 9 so far, and I concluded that the Sonai's tear is one of the big ones. And I believe, since Link's arm and the Sonai's are alike, I can theorize that they are linked. So I think the Sonai has one of them, and Link has the other one. I would assume since the Sonai seem to give out the seven others, or as a guardian to them from the mural, I would assume that the two bigger ones could be catalysts of some sort, which is a way for them to channel the other tears. So I believe Link is able to control the other tears, since he has one of the bigger ones. However, we haven't seen a shot with Link with this big tear. We have gotten this shot, though it is very similar to Zelda's. However, it can be that this is a changed form of Zelda's, because I think this is one of the big ones. Link is only channeling it in this shot with the form of Zelda's. And from the gameplay trailer that Aonuma-sama gave us, we saw some of Link's new abilities. Three of them, in fact. Fuse, Ultra Hand, and Ascend. All seem to be uh, somewhat starter abilities, somewhat akin to the Bomb, Stasis, Cryonis, and Magnesis runes from Breath of the Wild. And these abilities have these symbols on them. However, the fourth revealed ability, Recall, looks very different. And this is the ability Link uses on objects to make them go back in time. What is to note here is that this symbol is very, very similar to the one found on Zelda's tear. So what I assume is that at some point in the game, maybe this specific scene here, Link acquires the ability to channel Zelda's tear. And the platform scene here is also very similar to the one from this scene with Zelda. And of course maybe this is from different times. So Zelda is channeling it over to Link through time. So for now I would count Link as the holder of the 8th tear, being the second of the big ones. So what of the last remaining tear? What I and many found weird is that the three champions shown from the trailers being Riju, Sidon, and Tulin, respectively, all are linked to the previous champions. These characters also got proper official art shown on Twitter after the release of the final trailer, but not any of them were of the Goron champion. So where is Daruk's ancestor Yunobo? They have deliberately not shown him, or whoever is the Goron champion, and as we can see from this shot, we see the Boulder Breaker, aka Daruk's weapon, so we can assume that there is a central Goron character that is going to be with the other champions. But why haven't they shown him? They could have deliberately not shown them, because it can be someone else than Yunobo. Or rather, it can be Yunobo, but they might be very different than what we remember. So we can just speculate endlessly, because the only proof we have is the boulder breaker for now. So we can conclude that the last tear is with this Goron then. Well, no. 
I believe this Goron's tear has already been shown. I, however, believe that the tear originally belonged to the Goron, but is in fact the one Ganondorf has on his forehead. And I will elaborate further on this in a bit. Now for the real final tier, the ninth one. This might be the hardest one to theorize, because there are no pure facts to help with this. Though we can assume the final tier is with a friend of Link's, a new champion of sorts. And there is speculation that it might be a Sheikah, specifically Paya. And she might be of some semblance of help to aid Link throughout his quest. And she was of course not featured that much in Breath of the Wild. So to help make this point even more plausible, I want to explain to you in the next section what I think the tears symbolize. If you have played through the Zelda games, you might remember the seven sages from Ocarina of Time. They were a sacred group that aided Link in his quest and gave him the chance to seal away Ganondorf at the end of that game. And each of the sages represented a kind of theme and they were all of different races, somewhat. We had Roru, the Sage of Light, Saria, the Sage of the Forest, Darunia, the Sage of Fire, Ruto, the Sage of Water, Impa, the Sage of Shadow, Naboru, Sage of Spirit, and finally, the presumed Sage of Time, Zelda. So what I assume is that the Seven Tears shown on this mural is somewhat linked to the Seven Sages and their titles. So for Tears of the Kingdom, we can assume, based on the color and ability, that Zelda's Tear is the Tear of Time, since Recall seems to be linked to it and it of course recalls time. Rejuice is most likely the Tear of Spirit, Sidon's is the Tear of Water, and then we get into some speculation, because Tulin's Tear, color-wise, would align with the Sage of the Forest theme. However, in the Wind Waker, we got two Sages, one of Earth and one of Wind. The Wind one was connected to the Kokiri and the Koroks, and the Earth one was connected to the Sora and Rito. However, with the setting, Tulin being in this tornado thing with Link, uh, I would assume Tulin's tear is supposed to replace the one representing forest in Ocarina of Time and is the tear of the wind. This would make more sense since a Sage of Forest doesn't really make sense with the theming of the other ones, representing more of elements and symbolism rather than a setting like a forest. Therefore, you can see why I assume a Sheikah of some sorts, most likely Paya, would be the owner of the supposed tear of shadow, since the original Sage of Shadow was a Sheikah. You could also assume that there is no inclusion of Paya or Ashika to the champions, resulting in the last remaining Tear of Shadow being actually attributed to Ganondorf himself. However, the red coloring of the Tear gives me the thought that this is the Tear of Fire. Because what I theorize is at some point in the story, I think Ganondorf steals the Tear of Fire from the Goron, or wherever the Tear is located in the game, and I assume he will use it to aid his cause of turning into his demise form. He could potentially mortally wound or even kill off Yunobo, meaning that he would look either very different or be a completely new Goron character, hence why we haven't gotten them revealed yet. And if my theory of the tears being linked to the Seven Sages is true, then there has to be a tear of light. And this is where Hylia comes in. Because as mentioned earlier in the video, I believed this woman to be Zelda in Hylia form, though this tear is different from Zelda's. What I expect is that Zelda basically has two of them, one for time and one for light. Why she has both is unknown, however, since she is in her Hylia form, it makes sense that she could have a tear or a power to manipulate or control light. This tear around her neck is also glowing as she presumably is shooting this laser of light at the Moldugas in this shot. And I assume this is not a power of the Tear of Time, so I think this is the Tear of Light. And all of this helps my theory in there being seven tears representing the seven sages. And of course, two catalyst tears. The assumption here is that the game culminates with Link going through dungeons with the champions to retrieve their respective tear. As seen in the trailer, Tulin and Link is in this tornado together, and they seem to be getting into a fight with what looks like an ice version of Goma from Wind Waker. I know, it kind of looks a little similar, I have to say. What I think is happening here is that the tornado is a sort of dungeon, 
where Link defeats the boss and Tulin receives his tear. Then I assume that you do that for all the other champions as well, and each time Link gains a new ability, and they will feature a sigil like this and a color akin to the tear. They could have elemental applications representing the sage they are meant to represent, and the recall ability, which is linked to Zelda's yellow tear, that I of course assume is the tear of time, will give Link the ability to recall objects and do other timey wimey stuff. And we can then assume that, for example, Sidon's tear might give an ability connected to water, Tulin's to wind, and etc. And Riju is also seen in this shot to control lightning, uh, and if this is the usage of her tear of spirit or something else is of course unknown, but it could be entirely something else and this could just be a application of a move or ability that Riju herself knows. So for Ganondorf's goal, it might be to achieve all of the tears or specifically maybe get one or both of the catalyst tears. And this means that the red tear Ganondorf has in this shot might have been one he stole from the Gorons as mentioned, but it might be one that he uses for time to try to go for the goal of getting all of them or any of the catalyst tears so he'll be able to control them all by the end of the game. So, to conclude this lengthy theory vid of mine, let us go over what I believe is going to happen with the tears and the story of the game. So, it starts with Link and Zelda accidentally getting Ganondorf resurrected. His spiritual lock by this arm gets unlocked, and Link then gains the mysterious arm himself, and it is presumed to belong to the Sonai. Zelda gets flung back in time over 10,000 years ago to the Great Plateau and meets this Sonai. They both team up to assist Link through time, and the Sonai has a catalyst tear, and Link receives the other one through the arm. He channels Zelda's time of tear through this altar, and then they instruct Link to get all the other tears before Ganondorf does. He then goes out and seeks help from the new present champions, and he helps them to attain their own tears, finding them in dungeons. He then gains a multitude of abilities, thanks to the aid of the champions and their tears. And Ganondorf at some point in the story steals the Goron's tear and eventually travels back in time himself to achieve his goals. He then turns into his demise form and Zelda turns into her Hylia form and uses her tear of light to try and stop him. And at some point Link manages to catch up either with the champions or alone and fights Ganondorf in the demise form at the end of the game. So the resulting owners of the tears in my theory are Tear of Time, Zelda, Tear of Spirit, Riju, Tear of Shadow, Paya, or another Shika, Tear of Wind, Tulin, Tear of Water, Sidon, Tear of Fire, Yunobo, or another Goron, eventually Ganondorf, Tear of Light, Zelda, First Catalyst Tear, the Sonai, and Second Catalyst Tear, Link. Do remember that this is all just one wacky and wild theory and most likely a absolutely 100% disproven speculation by me uh, when the game finally releases. And of course, uh, do not think any of this as facts at all. <laughs> and uh, if of course there was something about what I said today that you felt was a positive thing, or of course a negative thing, do please uh, comment that down below as well, because uh, I really want to see some... Uh, uh, things for and against my theory really and I really like to see people's theories and speculation overall So if you have anything, please go below and comment it if you have something and I will most likely comment you back about what I feel about it So uh, if also this video gets a, a good amount of attention or likes or whatever I will of course probably do another video about any other kind of theory about the Zelda games overall. Maybe I'll do one at the end of Tears of the Kingdom when I play through that. Maybe there's some stuff to get from that and maybe there's like a hint to another game. We will see. So as mentioned, if you have anything, please go below in the comments and tell me what your thoughts about all this is. So once again, thank you. Thanks a bunch for watching and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of future videos. And feel free to follow me on any of my other social medias, all linked in the description. My Twitch channel, where I stream games for 100% completion, like what I'm planning for Tears of the Kingdom. My YouTube VODs channel for all of my streaming VODs. And finally my Twitter and TikTok for updates and sketches, respectively.